The next model uh, for regional strategies that I want to talk about is what I call the spreading vine. And um, you know how vines work? A lot of vines like a strawberry vine, uh, it will grow for a little while and sink some roots. It will grow a little while and sink some roots. And um, so that's kind of the way vines spread. And actually you can cut the vine off in one spot, and it'll, but it'll just kind of keep going because it it's has roots in other places. And uh, so I compare this to a church plant where one church is planted and then you might go up a highway a little bit and then in the next town you plant a church and sink some spiritual roots there and then there's, you go up the highway a little further and then the next city or town there and you plant a church there. And so each church becomes sort of the launching point for the next church that is going to be planted. And uh, this has been done in, in many places. And uh, let me just give you a couple of uh, simple examples of this. Uh, if we go to Romania, uh, for example, in 1990, there was a church started in Craiova down here. Uh, this is a region of Romania where there are relatively fewer Christians. Most of the Christians in Romania are over on this side of the mountains. And so in the south and more east, there are fewer Christians. And so a church was started here. It was an outgrowth of a student work at the university. Well, then they went up the road a couple years later to Slatina, another uh, pretty good sized city, um, right up the highway. They just sort of followed this highway. And then a couple of years later, they started a church in Pitesht. Um, I think that's a city with uh, around maybe 100,000 people or so. So these are good sized cities. And then uh, in 94, they had started a city of Bucharest. In 95, they had started a church out way out on the side in Constanza on the Black Sea. And then in 98, they continued to follow this road. So here you can sort of see there's this idea of, of following the highway and planting churches along here. Now these churches could share resources a little bit. Um, we're talking about a distance by vehicle, by car. It's probably about a two hour drive from Bucharest out to these places. It's about another maybe two hour drive from Bucharest to Constanza, which means Constanza is three or four hours away from these churches here. Now you can imagine these churches here could have a more, uh, more of a relationship with one another. They could share uh, preaching and, and do teaching and different things. This church out here, it's pretty isolated. And so it was more difficult for that church to feel part of the movement. And so this is, has some of the effects of the cluster idea that, that these churches, because they were in closer proximity, were able to help each other more. This one was a little more isolated and out of the way. Um, that doesn't mean they shouldn't have planted a church there. It just does mean it was a little more difficult for that church to really uh, develop in the same kind of movement. Uh, a little bit of a different example. Let's go to Africa and the German Alliance mission in Mali. And uh, there are two regions that I'm going to show you here. One is in the Mopti region. You can see sort of in the central part of Mali. And then the other is in the capital region down near Bamako. And so if you look more in the Mopti region, which is the map that you're seeing there, you can see that there's a, a major road here that kind of follows along the side of the river. And uh, that became sort of their route for planting a church. And so you can see in 1989 alone, they planted a number of churches along that road in these villages. These are all fairly small villages, and so these churches uh, might have 30 to uh, 50 people. And then in 1990, they start sort of filling in the gaps in the, in the villages in between along the road. Uh, a couple more churches there, 1994 a little further to the south, 97 off to the side there a little bit. And so they followed that highway. Now, if we go to the Bamako, this is the capital city. Interesting feature of this is you have the, the Niger and Niger River that passes through along by the city here. But for navigating uh, uh, vessels, ships, and, and cargo, the uh, Niger Canal was made along here, sort of parallel to the, to the river. And then you have the road that sort of parallels that canal. And so this is where the traffic is going. And we have a series of villages, of course, that are along the canal there as well. And so first church, 
1989 in the capital, and then they went to the other north side of the river, 1991 started a church up in a village there, but then they began to follow the canal route. So in 92, 93, 94, several churches now, it's beginning to increase, 98. And so they're, they're following along the, uh, the roads, the canals, the natural routes of transportation, and each church is looking, where can we become a part of this? Where is going to be the next place that we are going to be involved? Well, and then we have what uh, is sort of the dandelion, or I call the spontaneous or diaspora approach to church planning. This is kind of what you had in, um, in the book of Acts, where in the book of Acts we see that the persecution broke out in Jerusalem, and uh, wherever the believers went, they end up preaching the gospel. And um, we read in Acts chapter 8, after the stoning of Stephen, uh, just starting right there at the beginning of Acts chapter 8, it says, On that day great persecution broke out against the church at Jerusalem, and all except the apostles were scattered throughout Judea and Samaria. Godly men buried Stephen, and so on. And then verse 4 says, Those who had been scattered preached the word wherever they went. So this was not a systematic planned approach. A persecution broke out, broke out the believers were scattered, they preached the gospel wherever they went. And some of those people ended up down in Samaria. And, or excuse me, in, well, in Samaria also, but ultimately ended up in Antioch. And that's how the church in Antioch got started. We read in Acts 11, verse 19, Now those who had been scattered by the persecution in connection with Stephen traveled as far as Phoenicia, Cyprus, and Antioch, telling the message only to Jews, some of them, however, men from Cyprus and Cyrene went to Antioch and began to speak to Greeks also, telling them the good news about the Lord Jesus and the Lord's hand was with them. And a great number of people believed and turned to the Lord. And so we see the persecution brought the gospel all the way to Antioch, ultimately resulting in that church, which then sent out Paul and Barnabas. And so um, this idea of sort of a spontaneous, unplanned spread. We talked about this a little with the house church network that you might have relatives somewhere. But here we're talking about actually a scattering of believers. In this case, in the New Testament, it was persecution of believers. It became an opportunity to mobilize the church to plant new churches and preach the gospel where it hadn't been preached. It might be war. I think of uh, Sudan where in southern Sudan for many years there was severe civil war. There were tens of thousands of refugees that moved from Sudan to Kenya to Uganda in refugee camps. Those people were uprooted and the gospel was preached in those refugee camps and many, many became Christians. And then when the war ended, they went back to Sudan and then churches were started there. A very roundabout way you might say, but the Lord is sovereign and he uses these kinds of circumstances. Maybe it's a famine. God can use, maybe it's economics. People move to other cities to get jobs. I mentioned in Dachau County in Munich, people moved out there because there was affordable housing for large families. And so God uses all kinds of circumstances to sort of scatter believers. And then wherever they get scattered, you say that could be a foothold for establishing a church for the gospel. And so we look, at, we look for God's sovereign leading in where believers are. And uh, when we talk about planning, I'll show you uh, some of the things we did, for example, in the Munich area to uh, see how God had placed people in different places uh, as a preparation for uh, church planning and sharing gospel. Let me give you a couple of uh, uh, questions now for application to be thinking about. Uh, and uh, in your own situation, how might God be leading you? Which pioneer and reproduction models of all those that we've been discussing for church planning seem most suitable to your situation? So think through, go back through that list. And as God is leading you, you pray about that. Are any of these models the ones that seem to fit your situation the best? And then develop a regional strategy for your location. Ask God to give you a vision that's bigger than just maybe one church plan, but a vision for your city, a vision for your region, 
Maybe those outlying villages or suburbs of the city. Maybe it's a whole nother city where a beachhead could be launched. Um, you pray about how God might, might lead you and what model is the correct one for you. We invite you to participate in the International Bible Teaching and Gospel Sharing Project. Whether these Christian expanded educational opportunities will become available to people around the world depends on all of us. We very much need and appreciate your prayer and financial support. For more information, please visit tvsseminary.com.